Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 16.2 beta one has been out for almost two weeks at this point, along with the public release of iOS 16.1. It has some good things and some bad things now to say about it. So we'll talk about that as we await iOS 16.1.1 or iOS 16.2 beta two. We'll talk more about that toward the end of the video, but I wanted to talk about my experience based off of me using it full time on my iPhone 14 pro max, your experience based off the YouTube community poll, where there's over 34,000 votes at the time of this video and 547 comments since eight days ago, I went back and looked at many of the new comments. I read all of the previous ones before. And so let's go ahead and first talk about what's new. And then we'll talk about the experience overall. Now, weather has a new integration with news that I'm actually not seeing, but some people are seeing based off of relevant news in that area. So if you scroll down below the 10 day forecast on iOS 16.2, many people are actually seeing news updates here where it's telling them maybe there's a hurricane or some severe weather and it gives more information based off of news in that area. The news that was shown was in different areas, but not all cities such as Raleigh, North Carolina in San Diego, California, but I'm just not seeing it myself. So some people are seeing that I'm not seeing it. And if we go to Mac rumors website, you can see what it looks like there with a little news excerpt there with more information if you tap on that. So that's something I'm not seeing, like I said, but will be there with the final launch as weather changes and updates. Now, if we go into the TV app, many people are saying the featured section has changed as well. So if we go into watch now, you could see there under originals, we have a very intrusive, large featured section now. So you'll see the new movies as we go through, and it's kind of in the way of what we actually want to see with the library. So this is something that some people will probably like, but it's a very intrusive sort of featured section that's updated. You may already see that on iOS 16.1 as well. Also, I misspoke last week about the lock screen widget. I meant to say lock screen widget instead of just widget in general for sleep. So if we press and hold and then we customize and we'll customize the lock screen, let's change one of the widgets here and we scroll down, you'll see that we have some sleep widgets. So if we go into sleep, we now have data and schedule. You can see that information here as well as sleep. So if I want to add this one, I can just drag it up there and add it in. And so now it's added to my lock screen. So if you want to have that, that's one of the new widgets. I meant to say it was on the lock screen. I just got caught up in recording the video and said it was a new widget and it's actually just specific to the lock screen. So that's something that's been updated now on devices that support ProMotion, whether that be the latest iPhones or the latest iPads, Swift UI has been updated with an animated layout change that supports 120 Hertz refresh rates. So that functionality was previously missing and has been updated in this version. So if you're using playgrounds or building apps, Swift UI overall will now have that functionality to utilize 120 Hertz refresh rates with the animated layout changes. So that's something that's great. That they've added. Now I mentioned with iOS 16.1, Apple updated the home app to support matter accessories. Matter accessories are now rolling out across the world and different manufacturers are taking part. Nano leaf is one of them. Eve is another, and we'll soon see that support here with the new Apple TV that launched. I did a video on that that has thread support and they'll all support matter accessories. So we'll see that standard rolled out, not just to the home app, but to other devices as well. Android will also see it on Amazon devices and much more. So it's a great standard. That's finally standardizing everything in the home to just work wherever you want it to work instead of having to pick one ecosystem over the other. Apple has announced new holiday gift cards to go along with the return of the holiday season. So there's now a holiday return window that's active from November 4th, or at least the day I'm shooting this video to December 25th and can be returned through January 8th. So if you pick up a gift, you give that gift and someone doesn't like it, they can return it. Also, there's a new holiday gift guide on Apple's website where you can see what's new learn more about different devices and see that information here as well. I'll link those in the description if you want to check them out. Now, as far as bugs and overall issues, well, iOS 16.1, many people continue to message me saying that, well, battery seems to be good for many people. There's quite a few bugs with lag, whether you're swiping home, I've actually experienced that again in iOS 16.2, and I'm seeing that with 16.1 as well. I've had my screen reboot or have it 
respring at least twice at this point where I was doing something, just going into music, maybe playing a song or going into, it could be any app, going into Safari, just tap on something and it completely crashes and then reboots. That's something I've seen with this update with 16.2 beta one, which is a major problem. I've also seen that camera lock bug. So maybe you go into your lock screen, you tap on this, go into your camera and within your camera, we'll open it up here. You can't swipe home. I can't get out of it, I can't swipe left or right, and I can't get out of the camera app unless I lock the screen and then unlock it and swipe up again. This is something I've been seeing from many people complaining about it, and it's a huge bug in 16.2. It's not horrible, at least you can get out of it, but it's still a pain. I find that I actually activate that by accident all of the time. So I definitely can't wait until that's fixed. I'm also seeing major cellular connectivity issues. Myself, it's so bad at this point that when I'm using the phone, sometimes with music in particular, connected to a Bluetooth device such as my car, it will just drop. And the only way to get it back is to turn on airplane mode, turn that back off, and then try again, and then it works again. This is something I've seen over and over with 16.2. At first it was fine, now it's not great at all. I'm getting pretty good speeds as I have 5G UC, but just using it for some reason seems to be a problem. So if we go to speed test, we'll just check it really quickly where I am now. Go ahead and hit go and let's see what we get since we've got two bars at this point and we're getting, well, almost 500 megabits per second down. It went over 400. So I guess 400 megabits per second. Let's see what the upload hit is here in just a moment. The upload is about 15, maybe 13 to 15, depending on what you're doing. It's actually going down. So it says 12, but in general, it's pretty good connectivity overall, but then it just stops specifically when it's connected to Bluetooth devices. So whether you're using your AirPods, I've had weird issues with the AirPods where they're connected and then they completely lose connectivity and disappear from my device entirely. I had to actually reset my AirPods to repair them. I saw this not only on this device, but also on my Mac as well. So that's something that definitely needs to be fixed, not only for 16.1, but 16.2. So it seems to be large issues here. I'm also seeing weather show up blank quite often if I'm on the location page. So if you have it set to use your location, oftentimes I'll go into this, let's try it and see if we can replicate it, go into it and it's working now. But often if it opens up to this main page, we'll try it again, it's not opening to the page I want. You'll see it crashed there for a second after I closed it. Let's close it, go back in. I was finding that it would just be blank and then take forever to load. So it could be part of that issue with cellular connectivity. So still some issues to work out. Of course, we definitely need to report those in the feedback app so Apple can be aware of it with our system logs as well. Now, as far as upcoming releases, well, since we're on a bi-weekly schedule, we can pretty much expect iOS 16.2 beta 2 anywhere between Monday and Wednesday probably Tuesday, but we don't know that for sure. And that's typically what Apple does. So we can expect beta two to release along with added 5G support in India. Apple's already confirmed this to different sources and will have 5G support. 5G millimeter wave won't be available, but sub six will. And I don't have millimeter wave, even though we have the antenna here, T-Mobile doesn't really have it in my area. So you'll have that availability and you'll be able to use it in beta. And then it should release to the public in December, mid-December, probably the week of the 11th. That's what I would guess since we had it last year with 15.2 on the 13th. That makes a lot of sense based on what we've seen in the past. Now, between now and the time we see iOS 16.2 released to the public, I would expect some sort of small update, iOS 16.1.1, to release to the public to fix a bunch of little bugs in iOS 16.1. We don't have an exact date for that. It could be as soon as next week to resolve that main Wi-Fi issue. Quite a few people are having Wi-Fi drop. So we'll have to wait and see what they do, but hopefully we'll see that sooner rather than later. Now, Apple has actually said there will be no more Apple products for the rest of this year, meaning that we won't have Macs in November like many people thought. We won't see the update to M2 MacBook Pros or anything like that, at least according to Tim Cook. He said all of the lineup is set for the rest of the year. So it seems to be what other people are saying as well with new Macs to launch in 2023.
Also, one thing I wanted to mention is a lot of people are curious about folding phones. I've tried them out in different videos from Samsung and Samsung is now saying folding phones for 2024 are coming from Apple and they're the main supplier of displays. So I thought that could be true since they would know, although they probably shouldn't be sharing that information, but either way we could see that sort of iPhone upgrade or update and We'll have to see what Apple does with it, but iPads and iPhones by then. Either way though, I'm not a huge fan of folding phones, but we'll have to wait and see. Now, as far as performance, I already mentioned before where there's some lag if you're swiping home, but in general, the performance has been fine for me. Some people's experience is a little different, and I've had a few people comment saying their experience is worse than iOS 16.1. So some are having really slow response. Sometimes it's freezing. Thankfully, I've only had it respring like I mentioned before, but I haven't had too many issues other than that. As far as battery life, it definitely could be better, but let's go into battery life. I am still getting through the day though with my normal use. I have 100% battery health and I also turned off clean energy charging. Someone suggested this to see if it'd get any better, so I thought I'd try it. It shouldn't really make a difference, but let's see if it has. So if we take a look at Today, I've had two hours and 56 minutes of screen active time, one hour and 29 minutes of screen idle time. So it's not screen on time, it's screen active time. So if we go back again to yesterday, three hours and 26 minutes, six hours and seven minutes, and I used more than 50% of my battery. Again, this isn't that great, and it really made no difference, at least for me, turning off clean energy charging. I thought I'd just try it as a suggestion, but that really shouldn't make a difference, but maybe it could if it was using a bunch of data. But either way, I haven't really seen much of a difference. My overall usage is very consistent throughout the day. And again, I'm 50% battery life by the end of the day, maybe 40%. It just depends on the day. I don't typically have to put it on the charger, but I am using other devices as well. So it definitely could be better. Hopefully it improves with the next one. Now, as far as the YouTube community poll, let's take a look. Oh, I've also had some issues with RAM management with this reloading over and over. And I've heard that from others as well. I forgot to mention that. Now, the community poll, like I said, has 34,000 votes. 10% of you are on iOS 16.2 beta 1, 74% are on iOS 16.1, and 4% are still on iOS 16.0.3 or older. 6% of you haven't upgraded at all to iOS 16, so you're on iOS 15.7, probably should have put 15.7.1 or 7% of you are using Android. So thanks to everyone that voted, let's take a look at some of your comments. Brian says iOS 16.2 beta one has some serious network issues. I can't even play games anymore because the ping will be on the highest level and I'm really struggling. And that's what, like I said, many people are having network issues. James says I'm using iOS 16.2 beta one on my iPhone 13 pro max. And I'm having an issue where if you swipe down from the top to access notification center, then access the camera by swiping left or selecting the camera button. The only way to get out of the camera app is to lock the screen and unlock again. And I showed you that as well. It's definitely an issue. Slim says iOS 16.1 and I regret updating Wi-Fi connectivity is the worst. And again, hopefully we see an update to fix that soon. Will says one thing which isn't working so well with 16.1 is Bluetooth connections on my iPhone 12 Pro Max. At least 50% of the time I put my AirPods Pro in, the phone says they're connected, but the sound still comes out of the phone instead of the AirPods. I've not found a sure way of connecting them. I have to try again and again. And so lots of issues, like I said, Hopefully we'll see that update resolve a lot of that soon. And really I'm hoping for a public release very soon as well. Hopefully this week we get both the beta and public release to fix both of these issues. Now, if you'd like to see more of these videos outside, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. It's getting to be that time of year again, where it's easier to do that. It's not super hot out. It's not super cold. So if you'd like to see more of these, let me know in the comments below. Now, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.